Thank you very much for listening. This is one of the um, patch that I worked on earlier this year called Yet Ye Yulong Mo. Actually, it's a irrelevant name. Just, you know, sometimes I, I was actually playing with the oscilloscope, the moving uh, wave that you see in the middle of the screen. That is an oscilloscope. And uh, yeah, we have a small group of people here, but I can still talk about things especially some of you are my good friends. Um, actually, I watched a performance yesterday night in Melbourne that you know, influenced me a lot. It is a, um, a performance lecture, a performance lecture which connects the uh, global uh, warming issue or the pandemic issue together with the, uh, uh, the practice of generative synthesizer or cybernetic music, if you would say. So it's a very interesting one, and I, I'm, I'm prepared to talk about it a little bit in this workshop. And uh, while we should wait for more people, I guess we uh, it is time for us to start. And um, great. How about, so first of all, thank you so much for joining this little workshop. I assume this is not going for too long. I, it's just some uh, talking about uh, sharing my uh, about my practice, recent practice, and some hands-on tutorial on how to use BCB Rec uh, to create some simple sound and generative patch. And as I know, some of you are experts in this area, and I don't know if everybody is doing uh, great in uh, synthesizers and have or have any experience of that so so do let me know in the chat box as i go on and first of all my name is longman uh, i'm an erhuist and i am pursuing my mfa in the city university of hong kong in a school of uh, creative media i do involve myself in a range of sound practices such as field recording such as sound designing and experimental performance and the year-end work for myself is called Emojians, which is now exhibited in the City University of Hong Kong at the ninth floor. It is an experimental music work. Uh, it is uh, also a work that after a year of research into the field of ambisonics and surround sound. After all, it is a, you can say it's a composition work and um, it's somewhat related to how uh, we use Discord or computer or creative coding method to uh, sort of generate some indeterminacy, some uncertainty in the composition so that I, as the composer, is not fully controlling what's happening in the music or the performance. So this is also one of the reasons why I'm having a workshop today because uh, Generative music is one of my favorite type of music. And uh, slowly I'm finding reasons or reflecting on my practice. And you know, I'm trying to tell you what generative music means to me. And uh, as I'm telling you, I'm also telling myself. So, so there are two objectives in this, in this workshop. So the first one is to tell you about generative music and what does it mean to me? And the second one is uh, we will have a general and beginner-friendly introduction to the software VCB Rec and this concept of subtractive synthesis. Um, as you may already know, there are abundant learning resources online about subtractive synthesis and VCB Rec. 
And uh, if you don't mind, I will paste a long list, not a long list, a list of YouTube channels that I found very useful. If you would like to check out later, red means recording, uh, Sarah Belred, Omri Cohen, Jakub Kivinsky, and so on. Very fun to watch if you like nerd stuff. And uh, for those who would like to follow through the uh, workshop in the second path, you may download VZB Rec 2 with this link. And I prepared a template patch in the Google Drive as well. And some of you told me earlier that uh, you can't really uh, open it, but uh, let's try. And some, some of you can, some of you can't. So let's see. It's okay, we'll be able to do it. So generated music. So generated music is a term that is popularized by Brian Eno in the 1970s. And he himself is a master in this area. So basically what generated music is, is that a music that is created by a system, a set of rules, maybe some if-then statements, maybe some temporal statements. It happens now and happens then, some if-then, a set of rules, basically. So uh, modular synthesizer, making use of them to make uh, uh, generative music is one of the best way to do it. And I can sit there and listen to it like all day and all night as a musician Dalumenta suggested listening creates a space where we can complete our thoughts. And this creates a tension against the acceleration and the productivity demanded of us. I don't know if you agree with this, but I do. And I, um, listening is like, a, I can sit there, listen to it all night. And it totally gives me a space to reflect on sometimes not necessarily a specific thing, like nothing. I can sit there and listen to it and immerse myself. And then it's sort of, um, uh, how do you say, um, a self-consciousness or a more like, um, how do you say, uh, a very, what is the word there? Like, uh, um, Oh, let me Google that. I use that word like every day, but when the, when the time I, I, I need to speak it, I, I don't find a word. Damn it, it's meditation. It's a meditative experience. Like how come forgetting words up like that? Um, I mean, so it is generated music for me. And in the music history, there are a number of word or terminologies that depicts the similar concept. For example, we have John Cage, uh, chance music or aleatoric music, which concerned with the indeterminacy with the rolling of dice, how uncertain the uh, music composition can be, or German composer Roland Kine and his cybernetic music, in which he focused in implementing an algorithm that can make real-time music. And this also raised the question of the role of a composer, whether we can take our composer from the equation. And I think this resonates very much to my practice. For example, uh, I imagine I have two friends. I mean, I have few more in reality, but imagine I have two friends. So they didn't know each other and I introduce them to each other and they talk to each other and they start to discover something to say to each other. And at this moment, I'll, what I would do I would just stay back and listen to them and look at them, talk to each other. And 
I have a strong tendency of doing things like that. Like, I don't know if it's like a shit things to do to friends, but I know I, I, I do take, take part of the conversation sometimes, but listening, I love just immerse myself in a group of people and just listen to everybody. And this is how it is. And to me, it resonates so well with my personality. So sometimes, um, or, or as I say, most of the time, your friends come together and they, they talk so harmoniously. But sometimes it also can be chaotic, like they can have an argument or fight. And for the word cybernetic music, the cybernetic itself is a concept that um, Roland Kine took reference from a mathematician, Norbert Wieners. So Norbert Wieners raised the concept of cybernetics in his book of the same title in 1948. It basically uh, depicts the control and communication in the animal and the machine. So it is a very wide field of study that use, people use to describe the society, describe anything that uh, constitutes a uh, process and an outcome and the feedback and goes around. So Rolling kind took this concept and makes cybernetic music. And at the same time, cybernetic itself can be used to explain the whole loop of the society. Like we are buying something from the supermarket, the retailer. But before that, we have the wholesaler, we have the producer. And after we consume the product, it goes back to the sea, like as a form of plastic or pollution. And it comes back to the source of the production line. So this sort of loop can be explained by cybernetics. So if we think about a generated music or synthesizers like that, there are questions like, what does a well-organized society sounds like? And what does a chaotic society sound like? If the whole society is a synth patch, who is listening to it? And that uh, generated music or synthesizer is reminding me of a thing like, uh, electron, like we have a circuitry and a synthesizer patch, the electron, individual electron itself can't hear what it sounds like as a whole. As we, as a human, we can't hear what the world sounds like. So playing synthesizer and hearing the changes by itself is kind of reminding me there was, there is always a sound that can represent the universe, but, um, as we are in the planets, we can't hear. So I think making generative music is sort of like a way to look for the sound that represent that, if that makes sense to you. So um, just now you have already watched some of my work and uh, maybe I can show you some more things that I can do with VCV rec or synthesizers. For example, this one. The polyrhythmic idea, visual representation with the oscilloscope. So the music starts off as a pretty complex polyrhythm, like 89 to 64. I don't know what does it mean. So uh, I'm pretty obsessed recently with making shape and sound together in VCV with oscilloscope. And this is an artwork, which is more rhythmic.
one fun thing about this practice is I'm not representing the sound with anything else, and this is the sound itself, how it looks. Hey, Longman, uh, could you uh, use full screen? I, I think there's a lot. Okay, how about this? Yeah, better, thank cool. you. And this is the idea. Somehow somebody say it looks like <laughs> someone, something that the FBI will use to bring more people. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Or I don't remember about that. <laughs> okay. Um, I think uh, at this moment, before we move on to like some hands-on with VCV Rec, may I know uh, how many of us will be doing this together or, or will try to do it together so that I can adjust the progress so that I, I can ensure everybody can can uh, is on the same page. I think Chuck Yin and Jia is uh, on work maybe and they are <laughs> they're, they are actually uh, the studio mate myself so expert in BCB rack as well. So give me one second and I'll begin showing you the VCB rack. Your camera. Hello. I assume that you can see my screen right now, which is the uh, interface of VCV Rec, and you can also hear me talking. So um, if you are following me after downloading uh, VCV Rec from the link in the description box, you will come to a page, a workspace like that. This is a Rec, VCV Rec. So um, basically we have some blocks like this is note, this is VCO, scope, audio. Um, it's okay, we will go through that one by one. So basically we will call this uh, each block a module and each module performs different functions and when connected it together, we will have some sound. So uh, we will have three steps in creating a subtractive synthesis. And the first step uh, being to add a VCO a scope and the audio module to the patch. So basically what we're doing is we need a audio input and audio output. So it is a how sound being generated. So to add any module, just right click to the VCV rack and then type in the name of the module. For example, we need audio more audio and it will appear on the screen. So we'll do it together like VCO. Oh, this is wavetable VCO, not with what we want. So VCO. VCO stands for voltage controlled oscillator. Basically, uh, the sound generated by synthesizer is from a oscillator that vibrate very, very quickly until it generates sounds. And now I have an audio, I have a VCO. If I connect them together, this scope is just for us to see what is happening. So I am connecting the sine output is generating sine wave from this VCO into this scope so that we can see what is happening. When we lower the frequency is like that. And if I increase the frequency, it will just uh, accordingly. So into the scope and 
out of the scope, we are going to the output. And now we are not hearing any sound. Why? The first reason is we haven't turned on the volume yet, but no sound yet. And the reason is every time we use the audio module, we have to specify the audio device. And in this case, I'm using blah, blah, blah. I have a lot. I'm using Zoom so that everybody can hear. Now, when I turn up the level, everybody can listen to the voice. It is a pure sine wave of 181 hertz. And for those of you who are very musical, you can try to type in some note like C4. Now we're hearing a note of C4. E. So this is the basics of how we create sounds. And also, there are different types of waves that we can choose from this VCO. For example, triangle wave, sawtooth, or square wave. And they each have different characteristics. So let's have a listen. Triangle wave sounds like that. More sharp. And if we slow it down, you kind of see that triangle wave, the triangle, as opposed to sine wave, is a rounded corner. Great. So you can go on to see the salt wave. Ah, a little bit nasty. Ah, dirty stuff. So square wave. So when we are playing with square waves, we can also use the pulse width modulator to change the shape or the width or how thick the sound is. This doesn't sound like a lot of difference to you, but if I increase the frequency, they go, it's like how fat the sound is when we uh, modulate the pulse width. So this is the basics of how we create sounds in VCV, FRAG, with VCO and audio. So the scope here is just for reference and pass through the information here. So do let me know if you are trying along and if you uh, encounter any problem, let's raise out because you can always find a lot of useful tutorial online, but this time I would like to you know, have everybody be able to do the same thing. So this is the first thing, subtractive synthesis. And the second step in subtractive synthesis, the word subtractive meaning to take something out from the equation. And the first thing we can do is to um, at the MIDI CV module, we want to play uh, the synthesizer with our own keyboard. And the second, we would like to have a shape because if we go back to listen to it, again, it's just like some plain one, have no shape, like, um, for example, you, for string sound, you should go in like smoothly. What? bell sound, you will have a longer release. Ding. In order to add that into our patch, we would need to, need to use some more tools. The first one being MIDI CV. Again, we can right click into the empty, empty space and type MIDI CV, find this one. Sorry, oops, MIDI CV, this one. Okay. Oh, I'm, I've already do it for you. So MIDI CV. So now uh, we are ticking the voltage per octave from MIDI CV to the voltage per octave in VCO. This is telling the synthesizer to listen 
to what I'm doing in the keyboard. I mean, the laptop keyboard. And it will listen to it and play this corresponding note, dividing uh, each note with 12 notes in an octave into uh, in, within one voltage. By the way, voltage control voltage thing, meaning the, in, the, in, in synthesizer, we use voltage to control everything. So voltage is the unit we you will use very often, or CV is the unit. So now in MIDI CV, we go on and choose computer keyboard or mouse. And now second MIDI device, we choose QWERTY keyboard. And also voltage per octave into the voltage per octave in the VCO. And now if we play sound with it, and now I'm pressing Z for C note, X for D and so on. By pressing M, I will have a B note. So you can sort of have a little keyboard on your laptop. Everything remains the same, but now I'm using a sine wave going into the scope. And then it comes out to something that we don't know yet. And it comes out to the audio. And now we would like to introduce the shape into the equation. That is the VCA and ADSR. VCA stands for voltage controlled amplifier. It specifies how loud the CV or how big the signal is for the audio. And ADSR is a short form for attack, decay, sustain, and release. And this is one of the most single, very useful uh, concept in many types of music that it describes the shape of a sound. If I were to demonstrate a little bit, attack means how much time do we need for the sound to come in fully. Decay, meaning how much time we need for the sound to drop to the sustained level. So sustain is the level, how much percentage of the original energy. And release states how much time do we need for the signal to die out completely. So using ADSR, we can basically shape out most texture we need. And uh, having some examples here, for example, string. String sound like violin, like cello, having long attack and long release. So see what happens if we pull up the attack and pull up the release. So now uh, you can see the cables here. I'm using the gate output from MIDI CV going out to the ADSR gate input. Basically what it means is whenever I press the keyboard, like I'm pressing the E note, it will give it will give a gate output, like a 10 volt output, to the ADSR. And whenever the ADSR receive a gate input, it will trigger the envelope <laughs> and control the envelope using this output to the VCA. So if you are following through, feel free to you know take a take a take a take a take a pause and see if the the connection is right. So the envelope output is affecting how much we want the volume level to be. If I unplug this green cable from the ACL to VCA, we'll see. I can also use my mouse to control the volume of the note, right? Now I don't have so many hands because I have other things to do. I need somebody to help me. So that body is by pressing the MIDI keyboard, it will trigger the ADSL and tell the ADSL, hey, please do this for me. Do this ADSL for me. So we are putting through the envelope to the CV input. And now when I don't press anything, there is nothing. When I press something, there is sound. So let's test out something. Okay. 
So this is my ADSR setting. I'm having a relatively high attack and high release. By doing so, I should be able to get some pad or string sound. Come in slowly. Leave slowly. And now if I want to do some bell sound, like a bell, like xylophone, they have short attack because once I hit them, they should sound right away. However, they will have relatively long release, which sounds like this. Okay, so this is bell, short attack and long release. And the last one, I can show you is drums. Drums, imagine a kick drum. We kick it, it sound quickly and it dies out very quickly as well. So this time we pull down the release and drag down the VCO frequency. Okay. Have a sort of blip of sound. Doesn't sound very nice, so let's tweak a little bit. So. Oh, now. Now we have something percussive. So this is the basic ideas of how we shape any sound into any shape we like using VCA and ADSR. And the process is we use the MIDI CV or basically with this module, we can allow any MIDI controller to control our synthesizer. So this way we can use other hardwares or keyboard to control our synth patch in VCV rack. We put the gate output to the ADSL and let the ADSL help us to modulate the VCA, the amplifier for the synthesizer sound. And that's it. The output go to the audio. And now we have a synthesizer sound that is up to our expectation, the, the shape of sound. Great. So again, let me know if there is any problem. Oh, Casely. So we're using a program called VCV Red. So thank you, Melody, for providing those information. Uh, do let me know or do join the uh, conversation. Let me hear you because I don't get to see the chat so, so often during the presentation. So I'll, I'll try my best to come back to it. So. This is the second step of subtractive synthesis. Now we are making sound and having shape. What else do we want to add to the sound? So this is the third patch. In the third part, we are going to add a VCF and a LFO. So VCF stands for voltage controlled filter. And it's a very important part for subtractive synthesis because this is what filter does. A filter takes away, takes away some parts of the frequency from what we have. So subtracting from the synthesis process. And LFO stands for low frequency oscillator. Basically, it is almost like a VCO, but it is much, much more slower than a normal VCO. Now, for VCO, now we have 200 hertz. We can hear the voice clearly. For pitches that is lower than like 20, lower than so, we can't hear them. But as an alternative, we can use them to control other things. We can use LFO as controller. We'll see what it means very quickly. So first of all, let me connect this to our audio. Okay, now the things come back. So just now we talk about uh, uh, making drum sounds, making bell sounds and making string sound. What if you are a keyboard player 
I want to play multiple notes at the same time. Yes, you can. What you need to do is to change the MIDI CV by right-clicking it and go to the polyphonic channels, change it from monophonic to 16 channel so that after that, you can see the cables becomes thicker, meaning they are transmitting more information. And now 16 voices can sound together and make chords. Something like that. Great. So we added the VCF, we added the LFO. How do we connect them? So first, um, now I connect the VCO output with a triangle wave into a VCA amplifier and output to the VCF and using this LPF, meaning low pass filter to connect to the output of the audio. So basically we're adding the VCF at this part towards the end. Now, um, the first thing we notice is if I play a note, it's very soft. If I open it up with the VCF, and this is the cutoff frequency. We are releasing more frequency that is being subtracted from the uh, synthesizer before and now putting it back. Now take it away. Very nice thing. Very nice stuff. So what else can we do with it? The thing is, if I have more hands, I can you know, use my own hand to play with it. And it's a fun, but I have too many things to control. We need somebody to help us. And last time we used ADSR to help us. And this time we're using something called LFO. And it doesn't matter if you use a wave table, stands for waves table, wave table LFO, or just a simple LFO. The result is the same. And uh, basically this is a very low frequency, two Hertz. Uh, we cannot hear them, but we can use it to control something. And in the scope, we are already seeing the wavetable LFO in action. Let's see. It's going down and going up, going down and going up. What does it mean? It means if I output the CV level, which is changing constantly in the wavetable output, my cursor, where my cursor is, it's going into the cutoff frequency of the VCF. And on this part, what we call attenuverter, I increase it to 50%, meaning, okay, now the LFO is moving and I routed it to the cutoff frequency, this place, meaning I want the LFO to control this for me. But how much? 50%. So let's see how it sounds like. I also play a C chord. Now my hands is free and the sound is modulating itself. And from here, we can already do a lot of crazy stuff. For example, we can increase the frequency of the LFO to very quick and have some crazy sound like a FM synthesis sound. Increase the resonance. Increase the drive. Increase the attenuator. And change the wavetable position. also constitute you the changing of the sound. So let me fix it for quick. What is happening here? So the output of it, triangle wave in 
this one and then output input now debugging is always a part of the learning process for myself as well so let me see why is there sound there shouldn't be any sound so the input triangle wave output input resonance is too high oh when the vcf resonance is too high it's basically con making sound out of itself so this is one thing i haven't noticed so resonance great now we know how to use lfo and vcf to take away and put back the part of the frequency by themselves we don't need to use our hands to create a sound so great and uh, as a general tip because when you download patches from other people, which VCV Rec is a very nice open community that you can download things and check out what the others is doing. So mostly, most likely, the people will using different color to represent different things. For example, red, red cable represents audio. So the VCO outputs audio, VCA outputs audio, and VCF outputs audio. The audio to the audio output this is audio the yellow one represents something like a pitch so i have the keyboard playing pitch the blue one we have rhythm rhythm means to open or close the gate for the rhythm when i play it i open and close it so blue for rhythm and green for modulations modulations meaning we hire a lfo to do things for us we use green we hire an adsr to do things for us we use green so this is uh something good to know if you would like to go on to check out more patches great so now we have a full uh standard subtractive synthesis so the last step we want to have is to make a subtractive uh, i mean a generative patch a thing that uh re doesn't repeat and go on and on and sound nice that sound sounds so nice that you can sit there all day and listen to it so we just need two more components the first one a clock a sequencer actually a lot <laughs> a scale quantizer a delay effect and record so uh, i'll start with a recording so with this recording button Basically, that REC, you bring it up and you route the audio into it. You can record stuff. Basically, it will ask you to uh, where to save the audio. And basically, after you're done, you just press the button again. You will have an audio wave file that you can use in uh, any other of your projects, like films, like animations, and like games. So, this is also how I extract audio from this software using record. So I'll start with a clock and a sequencer. Now I'll use this sequencer. By the way, all the modules we're using are basically uh, default with VCV, meaning we do not need to download any external library in order to use them. However, if you like to use external thing, you can use the library function to browse the VCV library, which I'll cover later. So sequence sequencer uses sec three three meaning we have three rows of cv meaning we have three different rows of cv that we can send to different places to control different things so we're using this to create our sequence there are lots of knobs but it's okay we'll go through them quickly so the first row we have the cv step one two three four five six seven eight and it will shift according to our tempo which is the clk stands for clock so that if we provide the sequencer with a clock it will proceed to the next step steadily one by one according to the tempo we give them so how do we give 
them a clock. Now, uh, there is not a convenient way in VCV, I mean, with the default modules, but there is a, some smart way to do it. I'll, for this time, I will use a wave table LFO. So what I'm doing now, I'm connecting the wave table LFO to the sequence input, the clock input. Now, why I'm doing this, um, I'm providing a clock output. If you see, this is 10 and O, 10 and O. But the problem is a LFO can be a different shape. If I do this, it is changing constantly, not 10 and O. So I would like to change the wave table until this is totally clockwise and it becomes a square wave. A square wave is very useful. It can be used as a clock to tell other, other, other modules about the tempo. So we can drag this frequency up and down. So basically, if you want to see it, we can drag it into the scope. Now we see the up and down. Okay, go zoom out a little bit and see, okay. Do, do. The up and downs tells you the pitch, I mean, sorry, the rhythm, the tempo. If I increase it, the tempo increase, just like that. And it's flashing quicker in sequencer, meaning the tempo is quicker now. Now, we have LFO, we have sequencer. What we want to do is to tweak each of the steps meaning giving each step, because now we are having eight steps, meaning one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it will scroll through one by one, and then it will send out different CV at a time. For example, CV1 output, we're having eight steps of different control voltage output here. And then we're going into a, essentially we're going into the VCO itself, if, if we are doing an uh, experiment here, uh, unplug the thing. Again, this is pitch. Pitch is using yellow cables. So now we will be able to hear sound. Yep, the sound is coming through. If I tweak it, if I turn off the light here, there will be no steps triggering because the trigger output is going into the gate of the ADSL. Now, we do not need to use the MIDI CV because we are not playing the synthesizer with our own hand like last time we used the keyboard. Now we're using the sequencer to play with us. So the trigger becomes the trigger of the sequencer. The trigger output goes into the gate of the ADSL. We are still asking the ADSL to help us to modulate the volume of the synthesizer, but in a different way. Every time the row goes into step that is illuminated, it would put on a trigger signal to ADSL. If I put on more, the if I put them all on. So what note are they producing this time? Is referred to the CV1 output, which is this note. Now I can turn it one by one. It's very fun, very experimental. And if you like to go crazy, I can press Command R. Command R, meaning to randomize the whole module that I'm pointing at, command R. And something unexpected will happen. But now, what if we want something more musical? We can first unplug the VCO. It's okay, turn it off. Now, we will introduce another type of module called quantize, QNT. 
basically what it does is to hello where are you oh I typed the wrong thing quantize qnt so you can see a keyboard here so basically what you do is to click or to activate or deactivate the notes that you want if you know music this is a c this is d e and so on if i want to choose a particular schedule a uh, scale i would right click it and press preset there are a number of things you can choose from for this purpose i would choose for example dorian now we have a dorian scale onto the quantize meaning every cv voltage pass through this quantizer it will automatically snap it to the nearest uh, note that is on the um, Dorian scale. And I will show you very quickly. So now, another thing we do not want from our patch is uh, the randomizer is very, very hardly randomized. And basically what we are using is one volt per octave. So having 10 volt minus and 10 volt positive, meaning we have 20 octave, which is totally out of the hearing range. So that we want to uh, limit it a little bit with a VCA, that one module that we used before. Basically we're telling the sequencer, okay, you have minus 10 to positive 10, but we do not want this much. We just want half of it or even less than it. And the pitch information goes into the VCA, come out of the VCA, goes into the quantize. And now we put it back into the voltage per octave in the VCO, we should be hearing something more musical. Change it with the randomizer. already something pretty interesting now we have a sequence let's add a delay effect that comes with vcv so delay now we put the audio that comes out from the vcf into the delay module and from there we Put that into the audio input. And also here I modulate the clock input of the delay module with the clock we created earlier. So by pressing command and dragging a, a cable out, you can multi-output a output to different places. So now when I hover over to a specific output, I can see this clock output is going to VCV scope, channel 2, VCV delay, clock input, VCV random, VCV, VCV sequence 3, clock input. So apparently this LFO is pretty busy, but he is okay. So now we have a pretty interesting thing. So where is the generative part, huh? The last thing we'll add to the patch is a randomizer. By typing random, we'll find a VCV random module and we'll put it into the patch very nicely. Now, I'm also using a wavetable LFO, which means the time, the clock that we created earlier to modulate, to trigger, to trigger the random module. So what random module does is it, every time it's being triggered, it can generate a random result or we can use it as a so-called sample and hold function. The probability is 100%, meaning every time it is triggered, we will give a random number. Spread 100%. The shape is 
very close to a square wave when we pull it to uh, zero. So now the random module is not going anywhere and it is up to us to put it somewhere. For example, um, the VCA, if we do that, okay, using green, increase the VCA a little bit. Already, this random module is giving us a more dynamic performance. Pretty beautiful. Now, we can also use a LFO O command drag into the input of random. Then, the, then it will become a sample and hold module. Meaning, yes, the shape is following the LFO. However, it's grid by grid whenever it is triggered. If we change the shape a little bit, now you have some gliding motion. Now you have it. A pretty generative patch that we can make within one hour. And what do we want to do? We want to record it now. So we firstly turn off the volume. Press the record button. Now we fade in the music. Hold it a little bit. Okay. making a slight mistake this is not the recording level this is separately the playing back and the, and the recording but it's fine for our listening pleasure now I can do some more fun things for that for example And I was talking about adding some external modules. How do you do it? Is to click the library and browse the VCB library and you will need to register an account and open up yourself to a sea of modules that you can download and try out. For example, I'm introducing this one from other brand. A secret source for every of my ambient patch. So now I'm going to reroute it a little bit from the audio output input again. Gorgeous. And from here, you can take away the audio recording to put it in your films, your games, your animation, or you can go on and explore the infinite possibilities of modular synthesizing with VCV Rack until you decide to dive in into the hardware world, which costs you a kidney or two. I'm still deciding. And this is it. Uh, thank you very much for coming and I would love to hear from you if you're trying out things and you have any difficulties. I'll stay here until everybody's 
good to go. And um, I was all, always thinking like, should I end this workshop with something brilliant to say? And yes, I'm thinking of one. Albert Einstein once said, it's not gonna like trash talk. Albert, <laughs> Albert Einstein once said, God does not play dice with the universe. And you know what? God told me last night. He said, no, I don't play dice. I play synthesizers. Sacrilegious. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll slowly fade out the music here. That's it. Thank you very much for joining. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. I see somebody has left and Zha Zhaiyin has stayed, Katniss as well, Hoi Yi and Melody. Uh, feel free to give me any feedback or things. Or if you would like to reach me, you can go to this website. Um, and this is my email. And in our studio, or, uh, although I am currently in Melbourne, uh, our studio is always open, like every Monday night, to for for people to who would like to try out electronic music thing and experimental stuff. So feel free to reach us and talk with us on uh, IG as well. This is my IG account. So I guess this is it. I hope. Thank you so that, much, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. I thought I thought there were more people, like twelve people registered, but yeah, still very nice, cozy little meet up i guess yeah and uh just one note to all the other guests we're going to have the recording um video up on our website so if you didn't follow through like every step like i <laughs> like i i was uh you can all uh, always refer to the video and like do more practice and then yeah uh, long man questions afterwards Thank you. And I think Jia is already following everything with eyes closed. So, <laughs> so yeah, thank you very much. And thank you for the hard work, Melody, and the cur curatorial team. And cheers. And we'll see you very soon. We will have another artist talk tomorrow, right? Oh, oh no, not tomorrow. 26. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. And yeah, please uh, follow our Instagram, SCMMFA. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time.